Hello everyone and welcome to day three of unit seven. This is on proving that two triangles are similar. So we're going to go over some ways that we can show that two triangles are similar to each other. So the first way is angle-angle similarity. So angle-angle similarity, to show that they're similar using two angles, that we need two congruent angles from each triangle. So I do have a little example over here. So say we say we have Say we have triangle ABC, and we're comparing it to triangle XYZ. If we have two angles that are congruent to each other, so say angle B and angle Y are the same, they're congruent to each other. We also have angle C and angle Z that are the same. That would be an example of angle-angle similarity. If we have two congruent angles from each of the triangles, we can say that those triangles are the same shape or they are similar to each other. So for side-side-side similarity, this will be a little bit different. I need to prove that three sides are proportional to each other. So for example, here's my little triangles again. So say I've got ABC, which is two, four, and six, and I've got PQR, which is one, two, and three. I need to make sure that all of those proportions are the same. So I'm going to check and see if all of them, let's check our corresponding sides, A, B, and P, Q, so that would be two over one, is equal, that has to be equal to a second proportion for two other corresponding sides, say B, C, and Q, R. So it would be four over two. And I have to check it a third time, A, C, and P, R, that's six over three. If these all simplify to the same thing, then my triangles are similar by side-side-side similarity because their proportions are all the same. They all are by the same scale factor. So let's simplify these. 2 over 1 is as simplified as it's going to get, but 4 over 2, I can divide both of those by 2. And if I do that, I get 2 over 1. For 6 over 3, I can divide both of those by 3. And if I do that, I get 2 over 1. So these two triangles, triangle ABC is similar to triangle PQR. And we say it's similar with a little squiggle. And last one is side angle side similarity. So this is by showing that two sides are proportional. And we have one congruent angle pair. So here's my two triangles. This might look something like, say we have angle Z that's the same as angle P. And then we also know that XZ and MP, XZ over MP, that proportion is equal to a second proportion for ZY over PN. That's an example. And angle Z is congruent to angle P. If that was all true, those triangles would be similar by side angle side similarity. We've got two triangles here and we need to determine if they're similar. So remember we've got angle angle similarity, side 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 similarity, and we've got side angle side similarity. So it's going to be one of those options. So for number one, I have a bunch of angles, so I'm going to look and see if I have two angles that are the same, and then I could say they're uh, similar by angle-angle similarity. So here I've got 83. On my smaller triangle, I also have an 83 right here. I also have a 63, and I also have a 63 right here. So these two triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity. Two congruent angles. Okay, number two. So let's look at what we've got here. We've got some parallel lines. One quick thing I'm going to notice really quick is we have some vertical angles right here. So those angles are the same because vertical angles are congruent to each other. So right off the bat, that's a good one. Second, we have parallel lines such as these ones. I have a transversal that runs through both of them. And with the transversal, I have congruent angles. I'm looking specifically at this one 
angle R, and angle W. Those are alternate interior angles, so alternate interior angles are congruent. So once again, this is true by angle-angle similarity because we have two congruent angles. Number three, this is going to be by side-angle-side similarity. I know this because I've got two angles that are congruent to each other, C and G, so one from each triangle. And since their sides are the same on both of these, that means that the proportions are also the same as each other. So these, again, are by side angle side similarity. So that means two proportional sides and one pair of congruent angles. Okay, number four. This one I actually have numbers I've got to check. So I'm going to match up my corresponding sides so I know what to look at first. So I'm going to match up the two shortest sides, which are 6 and 9. And then I'm going to match up the middle side, so 8 and 12. And the longest side, which is 12 and 18. So those are all my corresponding sides. And I need to check and see if those proportions are the same. So my first proportion, I'm going to use the two shortest sides, so 6 and 9. So make a proportion using those. So I'm going to do 6 over 9. And that has to be equal to every other proportion. Now let's do the second one. 8 and 12, my medium sides, which has to be equal to my longest side, which is 12 and 18. Those are my proportions. Okay, let's simplify these. 6 and 9, those are both divisible by 3. So when I divide those each by 3, I get 2 thirds. 8 and 12 are both divisible by 4. So when I divide top and bottom by 4, I get 2 thirds. And 12 and 18, those are both divisible by 6. When I divide 12 by 6, I get 2. When I divide 18 by 6, I get 3. So these are all um, by the same ratio, the same proportions, 2 thirds. So these are similar by side, side, side similarity because we've got three sets of proportional sides. Okay, number five. So we've got a little tip here that says to make these triangles separate, and that will help us look at the triangles a little bit better. So I'm going to redraw these separate from each other. So here is my first triangle. I'm going to trace them and then move them. So this is A, B, D, and we're comparing that to the big triangle. So that's A, C, E. And we've got some side lengths. I'm going to go through and label stuff. A, B is 8. A, D is 10. This is 7. And we've also got, so really quick, let's look at A, C. A, C is this whole length, which is made up of 8 and 4. So 8 plus 4 will give me the whole length. That's 12. Same thing for A, E. I have to look at the whole thing. 10 plus 15, or 10 plus 5 is 15. So my missing side there is 15. Now let's check my proportions. So my corresponding sides, I'm going to look at A, B, and A, C. Those are corresponding. So let's check and make sure that those are proportionally the same. 8 over 12, that's my first proportion. My second proportion, I'm going to find another corresponding set of sides. So 10 and 15. So 10 over 15. Simplify that. 8 over 12, they're both divisible by 4. And when I simplify, I get 2 over 3. And 10, I can divide those each by 5, 10 and 15. And I get 2 over 3 again. So the sides are proportional. But two sides, having two sides that are proportional to each other is not enough to say that these are similar. However, these two triangles both share an angle A. And angle A is congruent to itself. It overlaps itself. So this is by side angle side similarity. Two proportional sides 
one congruent angle, and that would be angle A is congruent to itself. Okay, number six. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna separate these triangles. So first is my small triangle, this one. Oop, I'm gonna move it over here. So that's triangle um, SQR. I've got a two here, and that's it, I think, just a two. And our big triangle, Go ahead and label that U S T. No S, that's a Q. Q. Got a right angle. This whole length U Q is seven, and this whole length again is seven. So to prove that these triangles are proportional, I really quick just need to find the length of R Q. R Q is this length right here. Now notice how the whole thing T Q is seven. We also know that this part is five. So to find the missing part, I just need to do seven minus five, and then I'll find out that that part is two. So that goes two right there. So let's see if these proportions are the same. So I'm gonna match up two sides. Let's check the proportion of these two. Those two have a proportion of two over two, which is one. Now let's check the proportion of these two, TQ and UQ. We get seven over seven, which again is one. So those sides, again, are proportionally the same. Notice how I use two sides from the same triangles. That's totally fine. You just have to be consistent with how you set up your proportions. Okay, so I've got two proportional sides. I just need an angle now, or a third side. I'm gonna look at the angle. I've got two right angles here and here in each triangle. Those are congruent to each other because they're each 90, so they're the same measure. Right angles are 90 degrees. So again, these triangles are similar by side, angle, side, similarity. We have two proportional sides and one congruent angle. Okay, for seven and eight, I need to find the measure in the following triangles. So in this one, I need to find the measure X. So to find X, I'm gonna make a proportion using X. So I'm gonna do X on top and below that, I'm gonna put the corresponding side from the second triangle, which would be this one right here, 12. So 12 goes on the bottom. And that's equal to a second set of proportions using the other two sides that I know, which is four and six. Okay, I'm going to cross multiply to simplify for x. So x times six is six x which is equal to 12 times four, which is 48, divide by six, and I get x is equal to eight. Okay, number eight, same kind of deal. I've got two corresponding sides here and here. Uh, so I'm gonna make a proportion using those two. So x plus three I'm gonna put on top, and that's going to be over 2x minus, or plus 10. And that's equal to a second proportion using two other corresponding sides. I'm gonna use d, e, and four. I'm gonna put four on top because it's also from the small triangle that at the x plus three is from, over 10. Before I cross multiply, I wanna notice that this fraction, four over 10, is divisible by two on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to reduce that fraction just to make my life a little bit easier down the road. And now I'm gonna cross multiply. Cross, cross. So five times x plus three is equal to two times two x plus 10. When I have a number on the outside of parentheses, I need to simplify that by distributing that number into the parentheses. So five times x is five x, sorry, I'm moving up here. Five times three is 15, so that would be the left side simplified. That's going to be equal to two times two x, which is four x, and two times 10, which is 20. And now I can solve for x. I'm gonna subtract four x, from the right side and move it to the left. So I get one X plus 15 equals 20. And then subtract 15 
and I get 1x equals 5. So that's it for day three. Take a look at your homework and I'll see you all. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.